So GitHub Copilot, your AI pair programmer, what is it and um, is it going to take our jobs? So I want to talk a bit about GitHub Copilot, what exactly it is, what it does, what it potentially can do in the future and how it's going to affect us developers. Now, this is not going to be like my traditional videos, uh, at least lately, where I'm very adamant about putting together a whole entire story and it's very well put together. This is going to be more like a podcast episode of me just talking about GitHub Copilot. And I've been thinking a lot. It would be a lot of fun to start a podcast. The only thing is I don't know who would be a good co-host. Someone else in the dev community that is interested in talking about GitHub Copilot or new things about different programming languages like JavaScript or Java or, or what, you know, that type of new web developer stuff. I think that would be a really fun podcast to do. Just get together and shoot the breeze and talk about all this different stuff. But again, I don't know who would be my co-host. Anyway, for now, you're just stuck with me. And before I talk about GitHub Copilot, I just want to say I appreciate y'all's support on my more recent videos where I've been putting a lot more time into the videos trying to really help tell the story or, or explain what I'm trying to talk about because there are videos like this where I'm just talking about it. Whereas recently I've been trying to put a lot more work and effort into telling the story of, of the hacker group Darkseid or displaying my entire office or my just build it video, which admittedly I got a little bit lazy towards the end of that video or last video, which it's funny because that's my coding video, coding the YouTube leaderboard part three. And I'm a coding channel, but y'all don't seem to enjoy watching me code, which is perfectly fine. I understand. I make all these different types of videos, office tour, talk about software engineering, try to talk about things that are for more advanced programmers, things that are for more beginner programmers, and then stuff that I code myself. So I get it. You're not going to watch every single one of those videos. I just figured y'all would rather see the coding video rather than the office tour video. But turns out I just don't know anything. Yeah, but I'm used to that. So it's okay. GitHub Copilot. What exactly is it? So when they say your AI pair programmer, I'm fairly confident that they're fairly confident it's what they mean because I've used code completion, AI auto completion. What do they call it? Code assistance, AI code assistant uh, tools, extensions in VS code like kite and like tab nine. I used to use kite. Now I use tab nine. I feel like I'm liking tab nine a little bit better, but the verdict is still out. I've only used it like three or four coding sessions. Either way, those are to help you complete whatever line of code that you were typing based on your previous code base. Like what else is in your code? What else you have typed using that extension? And that's kind of the AI part. It's, it's learning like that. But when it comes to your AI pair programmer, the GitHub Copilot is basically having Stack Overflow automated inside your text editor, which is Visual Studio Code for right now. Because instead of taking a problem and typing in your code or in question to Stack Overflow or, or you are trying to solve a problem so you search it and you get a Stack Overflow answer as your, as your result, you just type in that question as a comment. Maybe you have a little bit of code that you think should work, but maybe it doesn't, or you name the class and you want it to fill out the rest of the code block. GitHub Copilot will literally just give you the code block. It, or if you don't like that particular code block, it'll give you 10 different options for what it thinks that you need. Sometimes the logic is slightly different in these options, but on the examples that I've seen more often than not, it is just like changing variable names or class names or whatever it may be. So I'm sure they'll be working on that and they're just trying to guess which variable names you like the best, but I would like to see if they could more mm, different results, different uh, solutions to that particular problem when it comes to code, rather than the same solution, just with different variable names. And keep in mind, this is all in technical preview. I don't have access to it. So these are just my impressions based on other people's access and what they have shared, as well as the research I've done on GitHub Copilot itself. But that's really it. And it's actually very good timing for the owners of Stack Overflow to sell Stack Overflow, which they did what? Within the past month or two, I believe, for $1.8 billion. Now, I'm not sure I haven't done too much research on it, whether that's 
the entire Stack Exchange, which I don't know, or if it's just Stack Overflow, but Either way, that exit was fairly well timed considering GitHub Copilot is basically just a better version, an integrated version of Stack Overflow. Now, there's always going to be a place for Stack Overflow if they ever allow new questions to occur instead of bullying you off the platform. And that is, why is my GitHub Copilot recommending this code when that code is actually better? I'm sure there's going to be a lot of questions like that, but... I would rather have a uh, GitHub Copilot in my text editor rather than typing in the question and maybe a code snippet into a search engine, looking at a Stack Overflow response, not getting the exact solution that I need, but using it anyway, changing the logic a little bit, changing the variable names. All of that is kind of what you have to do now if you don't know how to do something, but there's a Stack Overflow solution there for you. But with GitHub Copilot, it, since it's, you know, artificial intelligence, it's your AI pair programmer. In theory, it should have that logic that you're looking for with your proper variable names for the variables that you've declared earlier or whatever class names that you have. And it should be able to fit into your code base exactly as if you typed it, it assuming you're a good programmer. Now, I don't want my GitHub Copilot code blocks to look like I typed it. You know, I want it to be actual good code. So, that's what I assume GitHub Copilot is hoping to do is, okay, this is the logic that you need. These are your variables and everything. Like, like it just fits into your code base like a glove. And again, for now, I do have a limited knowledge of GitHub Copilot in the sense that I haven't actually been able to personally use it. I'm on the wait list. I want to be able to make a video with y'all saying, oh, I've, you know, I, I've used it for the past month or, or past week or whatever it may be. And this is kind of my experience with it it does this bad it does this good whatever it may be but in terms of how they're kind of pitching it and how others have shared their experience that's the overall gist of github copilot now my thoughts on github copilot well first and foremost github if you don't know is now owned by microsoft and you know how i feel about microsoft as i say this on my windows computer but I've made plenty of videos regarding Microsoft and kind of their shady practices in the past and a lot of that type of stuff. And the fact of the matter is Microsoft with GitHub is trying to take over the entire market, it appears. Because just think about the steps of creating a coding project. You, you know, obviously you formulate the idea, whatever, but then you plan it out. You use some sort of uh, uh, software like Jira or Trello or, or Asana or maybe Notion, whatever it may be, those types of softwares. But GitHub now has GitHub issues, and that is exactly what it is, is a uh, project management tool. And then what do you do next? Well, you code the project. And if you don't know, Atom is brought to you by GitHub according to their repository, so they have their own text editor. Now, it is a solid text editor, but I do, in my opinion, believe that they have a ways to go to compete, like actually compete with a, a VS Code. I like VS Code a lot better, even though I like the aesthetics and the overall interface of Atom a little bit better. It's just VS Code just seems to do better. But either way, they have that, which I wouldn't be surprised if one day they renamed it to GitHub Atom or, or GitHub Editor. That would probably be what they do because it's very straightforward. GitHub Issues, Project Management Tool, Issue Tracking Tool. And then GitHub Editor would make sense because it would be a text editor. And then what do you do after that? Well version control you obviously github version control and obviously you don't have to use github i'm saying this is like uh obviously you don't have to use apple but yet apple has cornered every single thing within their marketplace and that's what github and microsoft seem to be doing with coding when you use github because what do they do next is a ci cd pipeline automated workflow github actions instead of using something like uh, circle ci or jenkins or layer ci or any of these uh, ci cd pipelines you can just use GitHub Actions. And then when it comes to hosting, I know they have GitHub Pages. I don't know if they have anything beyond that, but that would seem to be a natural next step. And I think that would actually be a very good next step. Like I hate the fact that Microsoft is trying to take over this whole entire, uh, uh, but I think hosting would be really cool because imagine you have this open source software here. You could host it somewhere. You could type in uh, whatever the repository name is, or you could link up your own domain to it and basically work it like GitHub pages, 
but for anything more than just HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, because I believe that's all you can do with GitHub Pages. But obviously, if you know you want to have an entire web app, then they would have to look into how to go about hosting it, but as well as like database stuff and and all that. Obviously, they could figure it out. It's Microsoft, but I don't know. I I. I I know I'm just going to talk this video, but that was a bit of a ramble. Either way, Microsoft is basically overtaking the market. And I think at a point, GitHub Copilot, once it's widely available, is going to be something where if you don't have it, then it'll be a hindrance to your programming ability. Because if you have one person and they have GitHub Copilot and they're able to just hit in all these automated code blocks real easily by typing in a simple comment and maybe starting the code themselves and then Boom, you have 10 lines of code automated by GitHub Copilot, whereas you type in the code manually, even if you have it off the top of your head, or if you don't exactly know what to do, then you know you type it in some sort of internet search, and then you have Stack Overflow, and then you copy and paste, and then you have to change the variable names, maybe change the logic a little bit, make sure it plays well with your existing code, and go from there, and then write your own manual tests. Ooh, that's another thing. The tests for GitHub Copilot are automated. You don't have to worry about tests anymore or knowing how to do them. You can just say, yeah, write a test for this and it does it. I think that's going to be one of the biggest things, uh, benefits for a lot of people because a lot of people hate tests that they hate it so much that, that they end up neglecting it. But if you can just type in, Hey, write a test for this and it does it. That's, I mean, I think that's a good thing because it'll lead to better code. So I believe that GitHub Copilot pilot will improve developer jobs but i don't see a point at least in the foreseeable future where it takes our jobs and that's what i want to talk about next a lot of people are like is this going to take our jobs this is bad for developers well right now it's good for developers in the future i mean we'll just have to wait and see personally there's always going to need there's always going to be someone that needs to be able to understand what copilot is doing to make sure that it is performing things properly and making sure that things are secure and that it's properly testing and that things don't break. There's always going to be a need for something like that. It's just a fact of, well, now that we have GitHub Copilot, we don't need a six developer team. We only need a three developer team. I could see that happening. But in terms of overall taking our job, this is kind of what you have to think about is that GitHub Copilot's neural net, the AI was trained on open source code, a lot of it, which I also believe that GitHub Copilot is going to be a commercial offering, so I think that's a bit of a conflict of interest there. Obviously, they did the work in order to to create GitHub Copilot, but at the same time, you're also using all of this all of this code that people supply to the open source community as something to use for your financial benefit. Now, you take that with how you wish. It's a bit odd, but that's not even the point I'm trying to make here. Is that so? They trained it. And right now it's in technical preview. But remember, it is an AI pair programmer. So the more programmers that use it, the more the AI is going to be trained and the better GitHub Copilot is going to get. So right now it's not all too great. But imagine if you have a million. I mean, it's pretty good, but it's not like taking our jobs great, right? But imagine you have a million, 10 million, 100 million developers using this. Whether you're a good programmer or a bad programmer, I know. If they're using my code, then maybe that'll set them back 10 years. So I'm um, I'm really just trying to get GitHub Copilot for our job security so it trains on my code and it can just never get good. But once it does train on all of these different developers' code bases and how they're writing their own code, it's just going to continue to improve. And the more that developers use it and that it's helping the developers, the better it gets to the point where it makes the developer who is Help, help training it obsolete. Kind of a weird dynamic going on there, but that is a potential. I mean, that is that not a potential. That is what's going to happen. Not necessarily them taking the developer's job, but the developer is training this AI that a lot of people are scared could take their job. But my final point of view is like we have nothing to worry about for the foreseeable future because you're always going to need someone to be able to look over and maintain that code base for the most part. I could just be naive or biased or maybe a little scared, but I'm kind of confident in that statement. Hmm. 
I'd love to know y'all's thoughts on this. Like, do you see it taking developer jobs? Not all developer jobs, but cutting a team down from six developers to three developers, or maybe not so much. And if you have anyone in mind that would want to do some sort of web development podcast every other week or every month, or, you know, we could figure out a schedule, tag them. Well, can you tag them in comments? I don't think you can. Let them know that I am in search of some sort of co-host on a web development podcast, and I just think it'll be a lot of fun. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. It was a bit different than my normal, well-put-together videos, but eh, I like sitting here talking. But uh, I hope you enjoyed it nonetheless. If you did, please leave a thumbs up to help with the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe if you like coding, software engineering, that type of stuff. And I'll see you all next week.